Hey there, my name is Epi, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm here to give you all 100 dumb facts from the recent Splatoon 3 Direct presentation. I know there's room for way more than just 100, but listen, I would rather keep my sanity in check. Also, I'm the guy that made these videos. Not that you would care, just thought I pointed out. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. The game has officially been rated E10 for everyone, featuring cartoon violence. The Direct was aired an entire month before release, instead of it being only two or three weeks prior. We get sent back to where we first saw our little inkling friend in the announcement trailer for Splatoon 3. However, this lasts for only a couple seconds. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. The City of Chaos, Splatsville, gives off Hong Kong vibes due to the skyscrapering high apartments. We're officially getting victory emotes in the game, but in this shot, an Octoling is emoting on the map. Kinda dumb that they would lock that ability away from us. We got an insane amount of new renders, including the Inklings, Octolings, and Deep Cut. Lil Judd looks like he stood out at the sun for too long, not only has his fur grown out more, but man he looks different. Splatoon 3 will be starting off with 12 different stages, including ones like Mahi Mahi and Wahoo World. When Hammerhead Bridge gets revealed, you can see the Nile statue at the very bottom of this shot. You can see this if you're watching the Japanese side of the Direct, as it is completely obscured in the English version. We get Get introduced to the squid roll, which allows you to roll around when jumping out of the ink, and also gives you a little bit of damage reduction. Squid Surge has also been introduced, allowing you to climb walls in a single burst. Back to the maps, Flounder Heights has officially been confirmed to return in a post-launch update, along with a brand new stage that almost looks like it resembles the Egyptian pyramids. The bow has a name, and they're officially called Stringers. I told you these facts are dumb. Speaking of dumb, they're bringing in windshield wipers in the form of katanas, a ranged melee weapon that'll make you look cool when you spot your enemies. We get introduced to three brand new specials, the Tacticooler, the Wave Breaker, and the Reef Slider. Nintendo's crazy enough to bring back many of the Splat 2 specials, including Tenta Missiles, Booyah Bomb, and the Inkjet. And y'all thought it was a placeholder when I pointed it out in an earlier video. This probably doesn't mean much, but when your character yeets a Booyah Bomb, you can see a bunch of electrical sparks added to it. More or less a visual upgrade. We got some kits introduced to us with the Splatana using the Torpedo and Ultra Stamp, Splatbrella with Sprinkler and Triple Ink Strike, and Splat Dooleys with the Suction Bomb and Crab Tank. Sheldon's back, and instead of asking for money, he asks you to give him licenses to have his ugly ass face on it. More kits are shown here, Splattershot with Suction Bomb and Trizuka, Splat Roller with Curling Bomb and Big Bubbler, Slosher with Splat Bomb and Triple Ink Strike, and Gluga Dooleys with Splash Wall and Booyah Bomb. This is important for me to mention, but according to Nintendo, if you have saved data from Splatoon 2, you'll be getting three Gold Sheldon licenses. Start off with Anarchy Battles with a higher rank. They tease the upcoming Splatfest by this small interaction between the two Octolings, which I think is really nice. In this shot, you can see Lil Buddy vibing in the distance, really easy to miss. We're shown the new shopkeepers, Gnarly Eddie, Jella Fleur, and Mr. Coco, who is absolutely adorable when you buy a product from him. It's been confirmed that main power-up and bomb defense up DX has been removed and replaced by a brand new ability, Intensify Action. Also, socks with sandals? You're fucking joking. Instead of Merch being a baby brat from Splatoon 2, he is now an angsty teenager. I don't think many people are aware of the fact that you could swap out the main abilities of any gear now. It does say you need 45 ability chunks, so these things are very costly. When you do swap out a main ability, you'll get a small refund in the form of 6 chunks of the ability you replaced. We got a crap ton of more kits here, and I'll be pausing this bit so that you guys can see which weapons have what. Ready to move on? Okay, this was definitely an overdue feature IMO, but we're getting loadouts now, saved gear, and controls. We get shown off the lobby now, and I can never get enough of this UI. It looks good. Ranked battles have been renamed to Anarchy Battles, and were completely different than last time. According to the No Longer Confidential Info, you get points for each match you win, and the more you win, the higher. There is a fee that's required to be paid, however. They brought back all ranked modes, including the dumpster fire that is Clamblitz. If you pay close attention to the Rainmaker footage, you can see that there are now checkpoints, which will probably make those matches go a little bit longer than usual. Private battles have been updated slightly, with Recon being available now. They have confirmed that there will be keywords, aka room codes for PBs, but it'll be available at a later update. The test range is bigger and better than ever, with new dummies to shoot, and a bigger area. You can also practice in the lobby 
lobby while waiting for a match to start, as well as hang out with your friends. At the far right of this shot, I think that's an AI controlled figure, because according to this, it will retaliate with enemy ink. So you might have a bot to practice with. At least take that one with a grain of salt. They brought in battle replays, which I know everyone's hyped over, and glad to see that they're adding in more stuff to the table. They gave us the ability to customize their very own lockers. It may not be apartments like everyone has been hoping for, but at least this works as a compromise. I almost forgot to point out earlier that there's a button titled Splatfest Region, which may imply that you can change regions after a specific amount of time. I believe this confirms the theory of gear no longer being exclusive. You can also change your name without having to go on your Switch profile and do that there. I love how there's one button that just tells you to get stuff. We also get introduced to Harmony, who technically we have seen before as she was part of the band Chirpy Chirps in Splatoons 1 and 2. Fun fact, the item she's holding in her hand is the Ultra Hand, one of Nintendo's first ever toys and was manufactured in the late 1960s. It's really cool that we're getting a fifth shop, and Hotlandis is where you can buy stickers and items for your locker. Splash Tags are a brand new feature that helps players show who they are. You can choose banners, badges, which are things you get from grinding out weapons, and titles. I already said that victory emotes are in this game, which is nice, but Nintendo, what year have you been living in to condone this? Splatoon 3 is confirmed to have two years of updates and will be getting catalogs every season, which will give us a new emote, gears, stickers, and items. Whew. There's still a lot of info to share, but I need to take a little breather here. We're only halfway through this mess. They gave us a brand new minigame called Table Turf Battle! <laughs> Thanks for doing my job for me. Table Turf Battle is a minigame where it's almost like Turf Wars, but in order to win, your ink color has to be the one with the most occupied spots. There's over 150 of these, which I would kill for this to be a real thing, Nintendo. I don't think I should describe how terrifying Sheldon looks from the angle, and I don't think I'll ever touch the mode because of it. No joke, this looks like it came out of Gary's mod. Splatoon 3 runs on the Source engine, apparently. There's also Staff, who will give you a starter kit to help you you know, get started. Alright, moving on from disturbing imagery to painful imagery, what's some Salmon Run next wave? First off, the players are jumping over to a brand new stage we've never seen before. While the first trailer for Salmon Run was disappointing, they made up for it by introducing two new bosses, the Slammin' Lid and the Big Show from WWE. You can also put in your golden eggs in the cannon the Big Shot uses to help you get the eggs in the basket quicker and easier. Once your shift is over, you'll be greeted to a whole new world of intense gameplay, thanks to the King Salmonid, which serves as a boss fight and has a time limit. Right here, it says that you have to be in the highest rank to achieve this. And if you fail this, you won't lose anything, as you technically beat the three waves. Another really cool thing about Salmon Run is that you can change your outfit. I don't know if you can swap between the newer outfit and the older outfit, but I'm all for this. We're also being introduced to Big Run, Salmon Run but on multiplayer maps, because as you can see, Wahoo World has been flooded. This happens once every few months, so it's another type of event we can be hyped for instead of just Splatfest. By the way, here in this shot, players will still have two specials available to them, but in the bonus wave, you'll only have have one special. Next up is the story mode, and boy howdy is there a lot to go through. Cuttlefish climbs out of his manhole reenacting what he did before in Splatoon 1. Alterna looks much more different than what we saw previously in the Mammalians trailer. Oh, and we also got a bunch of Moai statues in the distance. I know someone who'll be happy about that. The text boxes are also different, and honestly, I kinda prefer the second games over these. There's just so much room! Oh yeah, Cuttlefish is retired, hence why he's no longer got Captain in the name. Callie and Marie are back to serving as Agents 1 and 2, and I gotta say, Agent 3 does not look like they want to be there. This might be an exciting mode, as you can see there are elements of the normal story mode combined with the Octo Expansion DLC. This is a bonus fact by the way, as I haven't really written this one in the script, but apparently they brought back Splashdown, and it might be a single single player special as we never saw it in multiplayer. There's also an Octo Expansion Tollgate thingy and as you jump out of it you can see a boss arena in the distance. Another cool thing about this is that we're also getting cutscenes for this mode? Like, yes please? There's so much going on, we see DG Octavia for a split second, some of those scary looking eels from Mario 64, and Cuttlefish getting taken away by the fuzzy egg. The objectives seem to make us get zapfishes as well as get those goalposts like in the DLC. With the story mode out of the way, let's get back into the basic and obvious facts. 
with the return of the mailbox. Boy, I can't wait to see everyone draw forehead comparisons on here. Instead of Krusty Sean giving us food, we have this thing giving us food with mostly the same perks. However, there are two brand new food items that show four squid icons next to an arrow pointing upwards. This is so that friends can grind out XP and coins together. We also see a remaining amount of these items. Does that mean they're gone permanently once you buy them all? Or do they come back after some time? The shoal has also returned, which is nice. I don't really care about this mode, move on. We didn't get a free camera mode, but at least we got a photo mode to take photos of ourselves in the most basic pose possible. You can put them in your locker too, which is nice. We have another one of these things. Talking to them will allow you to enter recon mode without having to wait for a map to get in rotation, which is awesome. It can go up to an hour instead of just three minutes. Splatnet 3. Krusty Sean is back. Not really playing a role or anything though, he's mostly there as a way to keep players inking turn as he explores the world the more you ink. Amiibos are returning because why wouldn't they? Brand new Amiibos featuring the Octoling, Inkling, and Small Fry in which they all look amazing. They'll be coming out this holiday. We are getting more weapons in later updates which we all knew was coming, but we're also getting X Battle which I suppose it's self-explanatory, do I really need to say anything about this? Large scale DLC confirmation and of course they're teasing us with off the hook, implying that they have more lore to throw onto the table. The last part of the direct is probably the most hype as we get introduced to three brand new idols, Fry, Shiver, and Big Man. They're holding those masks that we saw in the poster for the story mode, which definitely implies that they play a huge role. This is definitely a cutscene by the way, and it might happen early on, as you can see that we're still on Alterna. Honestly, Fry should have kept herself hidden behind that mask because Twitter's playing fucking tic-tac-toe on her forehead. History repeats itself, huh? Fun fact, both of their names are contrast to each other, as Fry means cooking food over heat, while Shiver is a response to feeling cold or fear. The brand new band, Deep Cut, are the new hosts for the Anarchy Splatcast, which by the way is something you can ignore while doing other things, unless it's an important event like a Splatfest. I know this is a placeholder, but I love how Scorch Gorge and Eel Tail Alley are all on every mode. Splatfests are returning bigger and better than ever, this time around, instead of picking between two teams, you need to think three times as hard as you'll have three different choices. They will now be going for 48 hours each, instead of the usual 24 hours from Splatoon 2, which is really cool because they also introduce a new gimmick where in the first 24 hours, players will play the regular Splatfest matches, so your regular 4v4 matches, but once the second half begins, Tricolor Battle begins, where three teams will have to battle it all out for the top. The winning team will consist of four players and start at the center of the stage, while the other two teams will have two teammates each and start on different sides. The first theme they're starting off with is Rock Paper Scissors, in which Team Rock all the way baby. This is happening on the 27th of August, thanks to the 12 hour Splatfest world premiere. It should be available on the eShop right now. This entire direct really made Splatoon 2 crying in its grave right now because now I just don't want to play the game anymore. You can barely hear the new remix of Now or Never, in which holy crap it sounds amazing. The Splatfest theme that plays out in Splatsville is called Anarchy Rainbow, I'll be linking that in the description. Splatfest will continue to have 10 times battle, 100 times battle, and it introduced a brand new 333 times battle. That thing you're seeing on screen right now is called the Sprinkler of Doom, which I think is cool? In order to activate it, your team needs to be the one to activate the Ultra Signal. At the halfway point of the Splatfest, they will call out the team with the most clout and pitch them against the other two teams in a way to help the others catch up. The results are calculated via votes, the amount of conch shells players had during sneak peek, individual clout from both Splatfest battles, Super C's nails are confirmed to be a thing again. The higher your Splatfest rank is, the higher amount of shells you'll be getting. Anarchy battles will be bringing back S plus 50, which was a thing back in the original Splatoon. Grizzco now has their own training area that you can practice in. The new highest rank in Samurai is now Executive VP, which obviously leads to more difficulty, like a 333% increase in hazard level. Splatoon 3 is going to be a good game and I cannot wait for it to release. Okay, now I'm officially done. I know I most definitely left some stuff out, but I don't have time to make an entire analysis video on this direct. There's just so much and the game looks so good. Anyway, let me know what was your favorite part about this direct in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye!